Hey everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Today I will show you a custom color managed workflow. I use this one especially when I have lots of different footage, for example from an ARRI Alexa, Blackmagic camera, some Sony camera, drone footage or stuff like that. It's useful for documentary work because usually there are many different cameras but it's also great for like commercials when there are lots of shots from let's say the A-Cam, the Aria Alexa and then some drone footage or stuff like that. You can use this workflow just with the Rec. 709 LUT at the end or you can also use it for film emulation. I really like to use it for a film emulation pipeline as this gives me really quick and great results and I'm way more consistent than doing my adjustments all over the place. Another great addition to this workflow is a fixed notary and if you want to learn more about this there already are some look breakdowns on my website. You can have a look at these ones and also there's a tutorial about fixed notaries coming soon. Alright, but now let's get started for today. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to use a real world project to show you, but in here are many different shots, so the principle of this technique stays the same, no matter if you have two different cameras on a project or 10 or how the shots are arranged or stuff like that. So in here, this is a Ari Amira shot, so obviously in Ari White Gamut and Log C, this is the same. This is a shot from an Ursa Mini 4.6K Generation 1. In here is just a gimbal shot, same project as this one. This is a Sony A7S II I think. So it's Sony S-Log and s Gamma And finally here are some drone shots. I believe this is shot with an Inspire 2. So this was Cinema DNG and it's deep out to the Blackmagic codec, but you can also work with D-Log if you have drone footage in D-Log or even you can convert to Rec. 709. All right, so how I do this. Usually what I do is to group these shots according to camera, if it's a commercial or if it's a documentary with lots of talking heads and different scenes or maybe even a feature film. I have to admit I don't work too much on features. So if that's the case, then I would use, for example, with the talking heads at the documentary, I would group them per interview or with the feature film per scene and so on. All right, so let's mark these two and say right mouse click add into new group and call this one Ari. So second one is Blackmagic Ursa Mini. Next is Sony. And last but not least DJI. All right. So now we have a clip level, a group pre-clip and a group post-clip and of course our timeline level. What I want to do now is go into the group pre-clip level and call up our open effects and type in color space transform, drag it into here and now we choose our input and output color space. Probably most of you use it for Rec. 709 transforms. For example, you can go and say, this is Blackmagic Design Film, Blackmagic Design Film and go to Rec. 709 and then you have your Rec. 709 transform but you can also go in here and say Ari Alexa and Ari Log C and that's the workflow I want to show you today. So what I usually do, I take all my cameras and convert them in the same color space and gamma. So I work in the clip level so in the clip level, the controls behave the same on every shot. And also I can go into my group post clip level or even the timeline level and put my Rec. 709 LUT or output LUT, show LUT, whatever in there. And usually this LUT is designed for one color space and one gamma curve. And so this one works on all the shots the same. Also, because I mentioned film emulation, with my own film emulations like the Kodak 200T, loaded the power grade in here already. You can get this one in my shop. I profiled this one from Ari Log C. So 
this one works best if it's rlog c so if i want to use this as input i will go into this later it behaves the same like the output lot on every shot that's really amazing and saves me a lot of time and i'm really efficient working this way all right so let's go on with setting this project up let's close this one for now and a great tip i got from a color scientist or i read it anywhere online unfortunately i can't remember where if i will remember i will put it in the written part of the tutorial it's good to do some saturation compression up front because normally you convert from one color space to another one and for example with red footage you have different primaries than with Alexa so it's good that they get converted and compressed if they're out of game mode for Alexa the right way and speaking of red I think I will just add another shot in here for red camera so give me one sec so now we have a red shot in here too of course same here add it into the group call it red all right let's go on in here so we did the saturation compression already and now to our timeline let's add a node via option s so a serial node let's head into our lat folder and go to ari and you we can use the ari alexa log c or the newer one 2019 I believe is this just the classic rec 709 lot the reason why I use the RLX and log C space is because I really love how this curve behaves and also I love the color science and the rec 709 lot from Ari I'm very used to this and also some other colorists told me that obviously as Ari is the market leader they have the best color science and mapping of the log C curve so that's the reason why I always want to work in log C even if I have other high-end footage like a red helium camera or stuff like that all right so set this up for every shot so we have the drone shot in here let's just do it real quick and grab a still and apply it in here but now of course change the input so we have red white gamut red log 3 g10 again to alexa with gamut mapping in here we have to change to sony so i believe this was s gamut 3 and s log 3 all right in here we only have to change to 4.6k gen 1 and 4.6k film and in here we don't need anything because this is Ari footage already. Great. So as you can see out of the box, this looks really great already. And I really love Ari Rec 709 lot. Of course, we could pull the exposure down in here a bit and in here, also in here, but never mind. And now we could easily go into the clip level and adjust all our clips, like I already said. And we have a nice consistent and coherent look and in the group post clip level we could even change some values or looks per scene if we want to and if we grouped it the right way now i will show you a different approach and this is the film emulation approach so let's go to our lots and go to film looks and use the codec 2383 d65 and out of the box this doesn't look right because normally we would need Rec 709 color space and a Neon log curve as the right input for this lot. Of course, we can add a color space transform just right in front of it to convert from our RE signal to our Neon signal and to Rec 709. But as I already showed you before, I have a negative emulation for log C. So up front, I use this one. I have a standard one and as this is a tungsten stock I also have emulated more or less eyeballed a 85B filter for daylight. So let's use this one and say a band node graph and as you can see this gives us a way better starting point as this is emulating film so we don't need to use the Rec 709 conversion. So select all of these and create a compound node and call this one. 200t so not the best workflow but let's grab a still again and use this one on every shot 
All right, so this gives us the same starting point for every shot and it's technically correct because we are in log C. All right, so finally let's head in our clip level and as I already mentioned, we could use a fixed node tree, but for the tutorial, I'll just quickly show you how easily you can create the look if you set it up this way. So let's add a bit of contrast like so, just to pivot a tiny bit, maybe a bit up. I think down looks even better. Close this one down somewhere around here. Looks good, I think. Add some saturation and maybe adjust the offset a tiny bit. So cancel out the magenta. So somewhere around here looks good. Maybe push a bit more gain into it. Let's keep it this way. I think this looks pretty good for now. And now just copy this one over. And as you can see, we easily get some nice looking results. Of course, this looks a bit wrong in here because we have the one with the daylight filter on. So maybe it would be better to use the negative emulation on the clip level. But never mind for now, it's the easy fix anyway. So just pull some more blue in the highlights and maybe just the hue a tiny bit. Of course, this is a bad example as we have many different shots in this project. They're not on the same reduction or stuff like that. But as you can see, we easily get some nice looking results too with just one node and a great pipeline. So now we need to match these two together, but I won't go into details in here now. But as you can see, we can ripple through all these shots very quick and easy. Even though they are completely different, we get some nice looking results pretty quickly. So this is a big advantage of this pipeline. And of course you could add some grain and halation or stuff like that in front of the film emulation. So yeah, that's one way. And you could even do, if you don't have any corrections after the film emulation, what don't recommend or after the Rexon 9 lot, you can switch to HDR or P3 or stuff like that real easy too. All right, so this was one way. Let's reset everything back to square one. And another great thing you can use for this kind of workflow is a plugin called Look Designer. So basically it works the same. Of course, I would group it again and stuff like that. And you can set your input profile, like in here we have Sony and your output profile. And again, I would go to log C, do all your work in the clip level. This would be the pre-clip level, clip level. And then at your output level, go to go from RE log C to Rec 709, for example, the RE one. And the great thing, what you can do with Look Designer, you can set your print options like contrast and print stock at the output node and also your negative emulation in the input node. And this gives really lovely results and you have way more options and stuff like that. If you prefer this way, instead of the color space transforms and custom made negative emulations or stuff like that. Another great approach is to use Filmbox. Filmbox gives you really lovely film emulations. And again, you see, you can choose your source. You have Rec 709, P3, Rec 2020. Aces and yeah, that's all you need. And again, you can go to negative only, print only and split them up and so on. And also you have some more options to push, pull, add contrast, vibrance to your split toning. Also, you can go into the advanced settings for halation grain, gateway and stuff like that. So this is an awesome plugin for color managed workflow with film emulation too. All right, that's it for today. I hope this helps you and especially gives you way more consistent and quick results in your grading workflow. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Mm -hmm.